Hey guys, Tori here from Overlook Horizon. Uh, welcome back. We're here for another launch today. This one is is not SpaceX today, though. This is going to be Rocket Lab this evening. So good evening to everybody here. If you're on the East Coast, if you're not on the East Coast, then I guess good day. Because right now it is October 21st, 2020 at 5 p.m. Eastern time here on the East Coast of the United States, which is where I'm located. But today, we're going to see uh, Rocket Lab. Rocket Lab, uh, the, the smaller rocket, up-and-coming rocket company. Super popular. They do some pretty awesome stuff. And uh, eventually, they're going to go reusable with their first stage. But we haven't, we haven't quite gotten there yet. But they're launching a set of 10 small satellites today. Nine of which are for planet, uh, planet Labs. And one is for Canon. There's a technology demonstration. We'll take a look at what's on board here in just a moment but we're gonna look at we're about 26 minutes which way is it this way i always forget whether it's whether it's left or right or my left or your right. anyways there's a countdown here we're counting it down to rocket labs launch so this is a uh, countdown and a list of events for what's going to come up here today for rocket labs a little bit different than if you've watched some of the SpaceX live broadcasts in the past. This is a little bit different, so keep an eye on the events list and you'll see some of the things that you wouldn't normally see during a SpaceX launch. So Rocket Lab is, like I said, it's a smaller rocket company, smaller rocket in general, and they have the small, the small satellites or kind of the microsats, cubesats market is what they're going after. And they've been doing quite well with that. This is going to be... Uh, what is this? Launch number, uh, launch number six or fifteen. Launch number fifteen today for Rocket Lab, and it's launching from their LC one, which is out in New Zealand. LC two will be on Wallops Island, which they're building right now. Well, actually, it's pretty much built. So they'll be launching a rocket from there soon, but today this one's going from LC one. So hello to everybody here. Today, I see a bunch of comments coming in. Let's see, uh, let's see who we got before we switch over, and I'll show you what what we've got going on here today. Uh, a couple of people confused about Starlink not launching today. So Starlink was originally scheduled for today, but now it's on the schedule for tomorrow. So Starlink 14, what I call 14, some people call it 15, but the next Starlink launch is going to be tomorrow, about 12 o'clock Eastern time. What is that? Uh, 1600 UTC. A lot of people mentioning the Osiris Rex mission yesterday. The the big boop mission. Um, that's actually going to we're gonna we're gonna talk about that uh, coming up, probably in between launch and deployment. Hopefully, Rocket Lab shows us the deployment today. But uh, Osiris Rex was the NASA mission that, or not NASA mission. Um, are they a NASA mission? Or are they an ESA mission? Now I forget. But Osiris Rex was sent to the asteroid Bennu and successfully grabbed samples yesterday. It is NASA, right? Yeah, NASA mission. For a second there, I was second guessing that. And they're going to have images and videos going to come out pretty much right now. And once they, in between launch and deployment, as long as Rocket Lab shows us that deployment, we will also probably take a little sneak peek at that and see see what they've got. Uh, let's see, I have to quickly turn off. I've got notifications going off in my ears, which I don't think you guys can hear these, but I need to turn them off because they are very loud in my ears. Output device notifications. Bear with me a second. There's no way I'm going to be able to keep talking through these notifications if I don't turn them off. Because every two seconds it boops in my ear. <laughs> okay, I think we're good. We'll see. We'll see how that goes. It is the Discord notifications that I keep getting. So Gabriel says, I think... He has the Discord notifications on. I don't know why they would have turned on all of a sudden. I usually, on this particular computer, I usually have Discord notifications turned off. Specifically for that 
for that reason, so they don't interrupt our stream, but uh, apparently they've turned back on all of a sudden. All right, so let's get into let's get into what this mission is here today. We're going to take a look at weather, see how it's actually going to look here, and also thanks to Flanagan Film. Thanks, Flanagan Film. Thanks for the super chat there. Appreciate the support. Sending, a, I guess that's technically a super sticker. Our dude with the sun with the sunglasses there. And Jaws Matt over on Twitch says Jim Bridenstine's talking right now about the Osiris Rex mission. Yeah, that press conference was right at five o'clock, so we're gonna we'll take a look in between launch and deployment. Hopefully, we have an on time on time launch today for Rocket Lab. Now, Rocket Lab's mission today does have a bit of a window. It's not instantaneous. The window goes to what time's the window go to? Like six o'clock, I think. I'm trying to pull up. Yeah, 6.03. 6.03 is what time the window goes to today for Rocket Lab. And originally, they pushed it back a little bit. We don't know why. They didn't tell us why they pushed it back. But they did push it back about 13 minutes. Not too long ago. But the latest is the launch is going to be 21 minutes from now at 5.27 p.m. Eastern Time which is 20, 21, 27 UTC. And actually, this even this has the wrong time. It hasn't been updated. Oh, there you go. I just had to refresh the page. Update it. So. so anyways, mission... Oh, this is not what I want to show you. Here we go. This is the one I want to show. Mission overview for today. We're updated to 21, 2127 UTC, not 2114, but the window goes to 20, 2203, which is 6.03 p.m., Eastern time here. We're going into sun synchronous orbit, which essentially means it will pass over a single point on Earth. It's generally a polar orbit. It will pass over a single point on Earth at the same time every day. And the benefit, the benefit to that is you can take observational imagery and get a consistent image across multiple days. So if you're trying to see how an area changes over a period of time, when you pass over that area and it's at the exact same moment every single day, that sun synchronous orbit there at 500 kilometers in altitude, you'll get similar lighting, similar conditions every single time, makes it much easier to track changes for that particular area. So Planet Labs is has uh, nine of the super doves that's their, that's these little guys here. Nine of the satellites are launching for Planet Labs, and then one is for Canon. That is a technology demonstration. That's the CE Sat technology demonstration that's going to uh, take night photos of Earth. It's also got kind of a small size telescope, which I'm, I'm a little bit confused on what, what the, how, what they're going to use that for. But some cool stuff on there. So. 10 total that'll be deployed about an hour after launch today. All right. I thought I had successfully turned on or turned off notifications. I guess I have to quit Discord because it's still going off. <laughs> All right. And weather today, weather wasn't looking too bad. Now, we don't get, like, a big weather update, at least not that I know of, from, like, a central agency like the 45th Space Wing that we do here at Cape Canaveral for launches here on the East Coast. Now, you guys are hearing my notifications. Yeah, all right. Well, I turned it off, so hopefully you're not going to hear those anymore. <laughs> the So we don't have a central uh, prediction from the 45th Space Wing, but looking at our our weather map here, this is out in, like we said, this is in New Zealand. It's launching right here on the Mahia Peninsula. Winds are looking pretty good. Ground level winds, that is. We should probably, eh, well, we'll stick to five o'clock. Upper level winds, which can, can be concerning, but usually not too much for, is this gonna switch to upper level winds? It's loading, still loading. Upper level winds, it's always a concern at Florida, but usually not so much for New Zealand, because I believe, now this obviously this is an overhead, but I'm pretty sure there's a mountain range right here, which is why you see the winds kind of disperse here, and they don't go directly over, over the island. 
I believe there's a mountain range here. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong. We talked about this last time, and I never looked it up. Virginia wants to know, are these satellites going to interfere with the Starlink satellites in orbit? No, these won't interfere. I mean, these are going to a completely different, completely different orbit. Remember, space... All right, we got apparently we got to refresh this because there we go. So here's our upper level winds. You can see upper level winds only about 30 miles per hour, so not a big concern here. Uh, but anyways, back to Virginia's question. Yeah, this is a completely different orbit. Remember, space is huge. It's huge. They won't even see any Starlink satellites, even though that there are already almost 800 of them in orbit. These satellites will not see them. These are also very, very small satellites. Gabriel says, put your status to DND in Discord. I guess I could have done that. <laughs> it's too late. Now I just closed Discord, so. I don't need it anyways while we're streaming. <laughs> so yeah, this is the New Zealand launch facility here. Remember, Southern Hemisphere. Switch back. We'll go to radar here now. Off the coast of Australia here. Radar was not looking too bad. You can see there's no showers or anything like that in the area, but we did have, if we look at the satellite's coverage, a bit of cloud coverage in the area, but it doesn't look too, too bad, although I believe that this is flying south. Now, normally, I would have relied on our friends at Flight Club for that, but for some reason, they don't have... Flight Club does not have this launch on their list of launches. It's still not there. I was checking one more... I'm going to check one more time, because I was hoping to be able to show you the path, courtesy of Flight Club, but they don't have it up yet. All right, let's go back to... Let me see a couple of... Why am, why am I still getting Discord notifications? I just heard another Discord notification. There's no... I, Discord is not even open. Why am I hearing Discord notifications? Is that just the music that I'm hearing? I don't know what's happening. I don't know what's happening today. I am hearing Discord notifications. Where is Discord notifications coming from? Do I have the website open, maybe? No, I don't have the website open. I don't I don't know what's happening right now. Okay, apparently I do need to set my Discord to DND because I'm still hearing Discord notifications. <gasps> I figured out what the problem is. Ha! <laughs> I have, I was doing real work and I'm remoted into another machine and I still had that open. I was kidding. You were hearing notifications from my remote machine. That's why I was getting Discord notifications. Okay, problem solved. <laughs> All right. Well, Rocket Lab should be going live here in about seven minutes here. So we're going to kind of hustle through uh, a couple of these things here. Um, so, going back to the actual satellites that are being... <laughs> real work, Kerbal. No, I wasn't playing Kerbal. I was actually doing real work, but... <laughs> um, so, going back to the satellites that we're looking at here. So, these are some of the uh, some of the Planet Labs imagery. The imagery from the Planet Labs satellites here that are shown. And there was one that I was going to show... Yeah, right here from the Beirut. The big explosion in Beirut that... You can kind of see, this is also sun synchronous, so you can see the difference in at what happened. Let me zoom in so that's even clearer. Can I zoom in even more? You can see the difference in those two images there from the big explosion from this warehouse here. Launch is delayed to 6.02. Oh yeah, new tweet from Rocket, from Rocket Lab. Let me see. Thanks for... I don't know who that was. Oh, everything space. Yep. Adjusted T0 time. We're now targeting 2202 for liftoff of in focus. Well, that's going to put us at the end of the window, so that would be the last delay available. Let me update the, the countdown clock here. All right. So this is going to go to... 2202. So now we're like 47 minutes away from launch. Well, what are we going to do for 47 minutes? Yeah, there we go. So now we got about 25 minutes until Rocket Lab goes live.
Let's go. There we go. Jaws Matt has a really good idea over on Twitch. Let's go to the NASA TV stream. So while we're waiting for uh, Rocket Lab, because I don't have any, there, there wasn't much I was, else I was going to show you here. So we got, now we have a long time to launch. You zoom back out here on this. Launch time. Here's our, here's our uh, timeline here today. Payload deployment's about an hour after launch. Hopefully we get a launch because now they just pushed it back to the end of the window. I wonder, they didn't say, did they? No, they didn't say. I was wondering if it had anything to do with the weather there, particularly the cloud coverage here that we're seeing. So now we're going to be at 6 o'clock. What does that do to our cloud cover? Not, not a whole lot. This cloud looks like the clouds are moving uh, east, uh, west to east here. So I wonder what the delay was for. We don't know. So maybe we'll uh, let's see. Did I have anything else that we were going to show? Then we can go take. We'll take a look at the Osiris Rex images. Here we go. We'll look at. We'll come back to this. Look at Osiris Rex for a little bit, but we'll talk about the Electron rocket here. Give you a quick little quick little peek at it in case you've never seen it before. You got your nine Rutherford C level engines at the bottom. This is your first stage. Interstage, obviously, the Rutherford vacuum engine up here. And then they also have this kick stage up here, which is like a tiny little third stage that the payload gets mounted onto that gives it that last little oomph right into orbit. All right, so let's go. Let's pull up the NASA TV feed and see the Osiris Rex stuff. Was this? Uh, this was yesterday's. So that's the actual Osiris Rex feed. We want, we want the live feed from just a few minutes ago. And did they show? Is that it right there? Let's see. You guys can't see this, but... switch it over to here let me turn the volume up starship nose cone is rolling out now too yeah that's also that's sn8 the nose cone for sn8 it's gonna make the big hop let's see let's back up a little bit oh we got a little bit of video remember this is sending data back the osiris rex mission is sending data back at like what is it 40 bits per second not kilobits or megabits, 40 bits per second. That's a long time. Team yesterday, it, it right, uh, uplifted the team. Level after an amazing let's turn this up a little really bit. Appreciate you're joining the team in our celebration. So yesterday was all about monitoring this real-time telemetry from the spacecraft as we watched the events unfold 200 million miles away. And the question that came up over and over again in that live broadcast was, when are we going to get the images back? When are we going to know how the sampling event went? I can tell you, a lot of us were up really late last night. Uh, we were watching the Great. images come down one by one. By about 2 a.m. here, local time in Denver, we got what was what I call the money shot, where we saw Tag Sam contacting the surface, and then the effect of injecting that high-purity gas down into the asteroid regolith. So I think without further ado, uh, let's just go and take a quick look at the data. Uh, I'm going to show you a series of images taken by the SAM cam. This is about twice the frame rate, so we're coming in a little bit faster here. Oh. And I'm just going to let that play out. I'm going to let you appreciate it uh, one more time as we go through. And then we've got some analysis that we can perform about what happened here. Maybe one more time. That it's is, just so cool. That's way faster than I thought it was gonna, that it was going to happen there. I must have watched it about a hundred times wow. last night uh, before I finally got a little bit of shut eye, uh, and then I dreamed of uh, a, a wonder world of Bennu regolith particles floating all around me. Uh, so just to remind you what we're looking at here, uh, this is a, a full-scale model of the TAGSAM head, uh, and so this is what's at the end of that long robotic arm. You can see it's about 30 centimeters or about a foot in diameter. 
And this is what we placed onto the surface of the asteroid. Uh, it's at the end of the robotic arm, and the high-purity nitrogen gas feeds in here through a couple tubes, and then it actually comes out through this inner annulus and pushes everything up into uh, the collection chamber. Uh, let's take a, a, another look at just a couple of the key images uh, right before contact and right after contact before the gas is fired. So there's a little over one second uh, time difference between these two images. And there's an enormous wealth of information about the asteroid surface contained in here. Uh, so the first thing that you can see if you look at the area right above about the 12 o'clock position on the sample head, uh, we're making contact with a relatively large rock, a little over 20 centimeters, which we had considered a potential obstruction to sampling. But uh, literally, we crushed it. Uh, when the spacecraft <laughs> made contact, that rock appears to fragment and shatter, uh, which is great news uh, because that means that ingestible material by TAGSAM is probably being created just by the motion of the spacecraft uh, pushing into the surface. If you look at a couple other areas around, like this one here about 1030, just off to the upper left of the TAGSAM head, you can actually see motion uh, in the regolith. So it looks like we are pushing and, and exerting a force throughout this soil on the asteroid surface. Also good news for uh, our potential for successful sample collection. I want to point out another feature of the TAGSAM head that didn't get a lot of attention yesterday. We talked a lot about the gas stimulation and driving bulk sample into this filter. But as you can see in this 3D printed model of TAGSAM, there's a whole series of circular disks. Uh, on the flight hardware, what's mounted in here are contact pads, literally made out of stainless steel Velcro. And these are designed to pick up material stainless on the order of Velcro. a millimeter size and smaller. So the fact that when the TAGSAM head is making contact with the asteroid surface and it's crushing what appears to be a very soft, friable material is good news, not only for the bulk sample collection, because in our laboratory tests, when the TAGSAM head penetrates, and we're estimating about two centimeters of penetration at least uh, during this event, a lot of material gets forced up into the sample collector. And of course, by crushing, you're gonna drive a lot of material into these contact pads. So right away, bottom line is, from analysis of the images that we've gotten down so far, is that the sampling event went really well, uh, as good as we could have imagined it would. And I think the chances that there's material inside the TAGSAM head have gone way, way up based on the analysis of these images. We're going to take a look at just one more sequence now after the event, when the gas bottle gets fired. Uh, you can see that particles are, are flying all over the place. We really did kind of make a mess on the surface of this asteroid, but it's a good mess. It's the kind of mess we were hoping for. Lots of material has been mobilized, uh, giving us additional confidence that we actually pushed material up into the sampler head. And just a little bit of the timeline here. Uh, we made um, contact. About one second went by. The gas bottle fired. Uh, the gas was blown down for about five seconds, which is as much time as we were hoping to get to collect that material. So the system seems to have performed nominally. The uh, nominally, the surface of Bennu behaved very well. Uh, and so everything that we can see from these initial images indicates sampling success. Uh, we still have some work to do. We're going to go through our entire procedure, including uh, what we'll hear from uh, Sandy later in the day about the additional activities for sample verification. So in case you can't tell, I'm pretty excited about all of this. This is great news. Uh, and. Uh, I'm going to turn it over to Rich to talk about the spacecraft performance from here. Well, it seems like, it kind of seems like to me, at least the way they talked about it, that that the the tag event was, was like five seconds long, but that image sequence that they showed appeared way faster than that. So maybe we're just getting like a really, really low frame rate. Let me go back to the actual the video footage, because that kind of surprised me. It looked like they hit it hard and were, it just like jumped off of it. Where was the video part? Let's go back to the video here. All right, let's take a look. Like right here, this, like that, that seemed way harder than I expected. I thought they were just gonna kind of touch it, you know, scoop up some, you know, get the, the material sucked up there, and then all of a sudden, this was like, kablamo here. This was this is quite the boop. That looks way harder than I thought. A um, couple of people asked when that's going to come back. So this is a sample return mission. It's coming back in 2023. So it'll be three years before it comes back. Yeah, there you go. Framework just put it out. September 24th, 2023. 
An asteroid high five, says Glenn over on Twitch. <laughs> That's quite the high five there. All right, let's go back. Let's go. Yeah, and don't, um, I don't know if I can pull this up. So I wasn't planning on pulling this up, but let me see if I can find it. But it is also, it's kind of far away right now. Um, let me see if I can, I want to pull up a map and see if I can show you where it's located. I don't know if I can do that on the fly right now. There you go. Pull this up. Let me put this on the... So this gives you an idea. Switch back over to this view so we can see our countdown clock. But this gives you an idea of where Earth is compared to the, the collection here. The collection point here. So we do have a ways to go before it comes back to meet up with Earth. So it's it's out there a ways. Yeah, and Matt Cox says there was about... Did he say there were five seconds between frames? That would make sense because... It seemed like we only got... They said that there were... That the collection lasted about five seconds and it seemed to be instantaneous in the view there and if it was if it was you know one frame every one frame every five seconds that would make sense let's go back to that video view here again watch that one more time Oh, look at man, that's so much harder than I thought, but it must be coming in much slower. And we're just getting a really low frame. Glenn says one second between frames. Well, I don't know what the answer is. How many how much time there is between frames here, but either way, it seems like a very low frame rate. It's not 30 frames per second, that's for sure. Shadow makes it look like there was a bigger indentation than a hole. Well, he did. He said they only went. They only. I think he said they only went two centimeters into the surface. So I don't think it was. I don't think it was a very, a very deep sample collection there. That shadow. That might just be the shadow of the spacecraft that we're seeing. This is an electron mission. No, Tobias, we're electron got delayed. So we're waiting. We're waiting on uh Rocket Lab to go live. Because they they did delay the they delayed their mission to 2202, which is 602 p.m. Eastern Time. 2202 UTC. You said they sped up the footage. Okay, that make that would make a lot of sense. All right, let's go. Let's. What else did we miss here from this announcement? Here we'll go. We'll fast forward a little bit. Did they have any other imagery, or they, that's pretty much it? I think. That looks like it. Now they're just going to media questions here. Well, in the meantime, since now we're we're still delayed for Rocket Lab, descent Glenn says the descent rate from NASA was 0 0.2 miles per hour. Can you give me that in could somebody give me that in like a feet per se? I'm sure I could do that here. Yeah. Uh, 0 0.2 miles per hour to let's see, feet per second, that would be a third of a foot per second. How about Let's go to let's go to metric and do like centimeters per second. 
What does that work out to be? Centimeters per second. That's like nine centimeters per second. Was the descent rate? That's what Glenn says. That sounds about right, because somebody else also said it was 10 centimeters per second. But according to Glenn, then that could just be a rounding error there too. So it comes it comes up at nine meters per second, but or centimeters per second, but that could be just a rounding issue. So it could could have been 10 centimeters per second. What is Rocket Lab? All right, let's go back to the mission at hand. We're getting down. We're getting a little closer. So Rocket Lab is a small launch company. This is going to fill in. Uh, who asked that question? This is Alfred. And anybody else that's not familiar with Rocket Lab. Rocket Lab is a small, a small satellite launch provider. So they have a much smaller rocket. Let me show you the comparison here. They have a much smaller rocket, and they launch small satellites, small microsats, cubesats, into orbit, usually a, a couple of them. Do I have a... Oh, I don't have... There are 10 launching today. Nine of which are provided by Planet Labs. They're Earth observation, like imagery satellites, which we showed a couple of pictures of before. Most notably, the Beirut blast from back in... When was that? I don't remember when that was. Somebody remember the date on that? But here's the before and after from that big explosion in Bay at, at uh, Beirut port. This is the image. So it was somewhere between May 31st and, and August. I don't remember the exact date, but here's uh, the imagery from May 31st, and here's the imagery from August 5th. And you can see just the, just the giant hole in the destruction left there. This is from uh, Planet Lab's Sun Synchronous Satellites. There you go. Glenn says it was August. Everybody's saying August 4th. August 4th. There we go. Yeah, so that blast was August 4th, and this is the imagery on August 5th, the day after. And this is from... Planet Lab, those Planet Labs imagery satellites that are in sun synchronous orbit, and basically they pass over the same point on Earth at the exact same time every single day, so you get consistent lighting, consistent sunlight, makes it easy to compare images from like this, from before and after. Uh, and then there's also a technology demonstration from Canon on board as well. Canon's launching a technology demonstration, which is uh, cameras that will take uh, night images, and they also have a small a small sized telescope, which are suitable for CubeSats. I don't know how they'll use that, but this is uh, I'm assuming this is the this moon image here is from one of those telescope type images here, because that's a super up close photo of the moon. So this would be for CubeSats, which are relatively small satellites, very, very small satellites. And what Rocket Lab is good at is launching small satellites for a very low price into orbit. And so they have their 3D printed engines there that, that basically help bring the cost down. They're also going to do uh, reusability with the first stage. It's a electric battery powered I want to say turbo pump, but it's a battery powered, usually turbo pump refers to the gas generator, right? Did you call it an electric turbo pump? We went over this last time and I can't remember what we decided. <laughs> but let's see. So they should be going live here in about five minutes, but. And these are the, these are the nine, the deployment structures for the nine set satellites here from planet labs this is also going sun synchronous again today so 10 satellites total sun synchronous almost directly polar orbit it's 97 and a half degrees so 90 degrees would be an exact polar orbit straight north and south 90 set it's basically seven and a half degrees off of a perfect polar orbit altitude of 500 kilometers sun synchronous you know what we should pull up 
Let's pull up our stuff in space map. And I should be able to show you... Do we have... Here you go. Here's CE Sat 1. This is the first Canon satellite that was launched back in 2017. You can see the, the orbital plane here. It's almost exactly, almost directly polar orbit there. So that's CE Sat 1. That's the, the one launching today. This is CE Sat 2. So this is the successor to that. What are the... I don't know how to look up the Planet Labs one. The Planet Labs satellites. They'd be listed under... Under Superdove, maybe? Or uh, Superdove? Superdove, nope. I don't know what planet the Planet Labs ones are listed under. Maybe Flock 4E? Flock... Nope. Hmm. If anybody knows how to... How to pull up the Planet Labs one so that we can show the previous Planet Labs satellites. Let me know. Are there any satellites to the public to look at something on Earth? I mean, I don't think we have any satellite... Uh, there's no satellites that I know of where you can just go... Like take your own photo i mean you're the closest you're gonna get is to like a um like pictometry or google maps or bing maps or something like that i mean those are all taken from satellite images so that those are probably your closest bet for just general public access there are satellites out there that are have commercial access that you can purchase images from that are a little more high resolution Somebody said, do the ISS. Oh, yeah, so the ISS is in a in a less inclined orbit. 51 degrees, 51 degree inclination versus today we're going to 97 degree inclination. So that's the ISS and where it's located right now. And Starlink is all over the map. Here's our Starlink satellites, which we'll see tomorrow. The web of Starlink satellites, they're all over the place. What time is the launch? Or about right now we're scheduled for 6.02 p.m., although they pushed it back twice now already. So hopefully we'll still be okay for 6.02. That would be Eastern time, which is 22.02 UTC. Let's see how we're doing here, timing-wise. Uh, Domin oh, Dominic's clarifying his question. Can we use a satellite to look at planets? Our Earth, our Earth that we can. Um, well, we have, I mean, we have satellites that have telescopes on them that we can look in the distance, and that's kind of what Canon's payload is today, I believe, is they they have a telescope on board the Canon satellite to look within our solar system. I don't know how powerful the telescope is. But usually something like the Hubble telescope uh, is uh, can be used... I don't know, can they... I know you can't use Hubble to, like, look at the moon, but can we look at the outer planets with Hubble? Might be too close. What's the website that you're on now? This is called Stuff in Space. So this is... At this point here now, I'm kind of watching the Rocket Lab feed because this is not necessarily good news. They're, they're radio silent right now. Normally, Rocket Lab would go live right about now. They are radio silent which is not good news. They've pushed it back twice. Their launch window ends at 6.03 Eastern Time, which is 22.03 UTC. 
They are scheduled to go to 2202 right now. That's what the that's what the this the countdown timer that's way up in the top left corner there is counting down to a a mission that's 22 minutes from now. But we haven't heard much. So they're at the end of the window. They pushed it back twice now. Question is will they continue? We don't know. But I'll take this chance here while we're just hanging out waiting to see if Rocket Lab is going to is going to do the thing to say uh if you don't if you're not part of our Discord server, you should jump in there. Type exclamation point Discord in the YouTube chat, and you can get yourself an invite to our Discord server, where we chat about all things space. So you can chat with all of our like-minded space fans in the Discord server. But we got nothing, no news yet. I'm just keeping it. I'm trying to keep an eye on. Trying to keep an eye on Rocket Lab's feed here to see if we're going to get an update on it, but nothing yet. <laughs> Gabriel says, and we talk about side carrots and space mouses. <laughs> space mice, Gabriel. <laughs> and the Dior. Somebody says, do you remember Deorberate? Of course. How could you how could you forget Deorberate? It's going to deorberate. I even got a dedicated button for it. I don't I know GBA's asking to watch the nose cone rollout. I don't have I don't have a feed for that and I'd want to do that with permission. Rocket Lab said, yep, we're still 6.02 p.m. But it is interesting that they're that they're silent right now. So I don't know what's happening. I wish we had uh, a mission control audio that we could listen into, because sometimes that gives me early access to what SpaceX is going to do, listening, listening in to the mission control audio. So aren't all these satellites just making it harder to launch into space? Not necessarily, because the, there's... There's a couple things when, when we're getting lots of satellite traffic. I mean, first of all, there's really not that many satellites in orbit when you think of how big space is. Even if SpaceX ends up adding their 40,000 sat Starlink satellites into orbit, space is still very, very large. And we've got satellites that are way out in geostationary orbits. We've got, I mean, here we can take a look at, I mean, this is, this is misleading a little bit here, this map. So these are this is all the stuff that's in orbit. And remember, we got lots of... We got geostationary orbit, which is kind of this red ring out here. We've got low Earth orbit, which is this mess here on the inside. Then you got medium Earth orbit, which is like where your GPS satellites are. Which is like... So this is the Navstar constellation. This is medium Earth orbit. You got Starlink, which is low Earth orbit. And then your geostationary orbits would be... I don't know, like a Sirius XM satellite or something. No, that's in medium Earth orbit. What's a what's a geostationary? How about the GOES satellite? GOES 16. That's geostationary. It's way out here. But so there's lots and lots of space up there, and really, it's not too bad as long as you can plan on where those things are going to be. It, the stuff that gets you into trouble is if you've got debris that's up there that's really hard to track or you're not tracking at all, or if you have... There's some spacecrafts that that are, like, constantly adjusting their orbits. That makes it very difficult to plan... to plan around. Somebody just said... Oh, there you go. So they're standing down. Well, that's a shame. Let's put that up on the. Let's edit our our uh, countdown timer here. So we've got a yeah, okay. So there, now we're updated to. 
Now we're updated to scrubbed. Bummer. Well, that's a shame. Backup opportunities until November 3rd. So we, yeah, we've got lots of opportunities to launch. We're going to have... We're going to have another chance. Scrubtober continues, says Framrick. I know, we need a Scrubtober... We gotta design a Scrubtober shirt or something after this after this month. But hopefully Starlink will be okay tomorrow. That's the next plan. Maybe we'll get a two for one. Maybe they'll go again tomorrow. Did they say why? I just see standing down from today's launch attempt, some sensors are returning data that we want to look into further. We have backup opportunities until November 3rd. Stay tuned for updates. So, looks like we got some out of family sensor readings. Sounds like a sounds like a familiar theme. I feel like we just did this. We just we just went through out of family sensor readings with SpaceX. Scrubtober continues. Well, that's a bummer. Red Scorpion, our YouTube YouTube member, Patreon member, Red's the man along with all the rest of our Patreon members. You should have you should have a rocket model kit in the backyard ready to launch for these cases. Yeah. <laughs> I do I have a Mercury Redstone rocket that I just I have not put together. I need to put it together. There's no launch. Nope, no launch. Sorry, Alex. Scrubbed. Not going to fly today. Steve Robinson says, oh, another YouTube member, space is massive in relation to all the all the satellites being up there. So yeah, definitely agree. Do you know anything about radio scanners for listening into launch calls? I don't know of any... I don't know of any scanners that actually have mission control on them. I do have I have super top secret access to the NASA phone bridge. But this is not a NASA mission, so that doesn't help us out today. But a lot of times it's done over a phone bridge. What is a data model in the bottom left corner? I'm assuming you're you're talking about this this one right here. This is called stuff in space. I think if you type in the YouTube chat, you can just type exclamation point stuff. All right. Well, unfortunately, we're scrubbed today. And I, I think I'm going to end it at that point. Because I didn't really have a whole lot to chat about at the moment, unfortunately. So I think we're going to have to end it. And I will say, if you're not already, join our Discord server. You can type exclamation point Discord to get access to the Discord server. And we'll continue chatting there about this very, very anticlimactic launch attempt today. We didn't even get we didn't even get to see any footage. They didn't even go live. So that's a shame. And I guess I'll put, let's see, let me put a Discord link in the, I'll put a Discord link in the Facebook and the Twitch chat as well, in case you guys want to join too. I'll drop that in. Oh. And I also, I accidentally did it to Discord. <laughs> All right, well, we'll keep, keep an eye out for what the next launch attempt is for Rocket Lab. The next live stream that I'll be doing will hopefully be tomorrow for SpaceX's Starlink 14, which will be right around 1600 UTC or 12, 12 o'clock Eastern time here on the East Coast of the U.S. 
So, yeah, nothing today. Well, it was good to see everybody. It was it was nice to see all of you. Thanks for bringing your smiling faces here to hang out with us. I'm sorry we didn't have a launch today. Bad sensors. Bad sensors. Blame those. So, all right, well, I'm going to end it, and I guess I'll go head over to Discord, and we'll chat some more, and hopefully I will see you tomorrow. Thanks, everybody. We'll talk to you soon. Have a good day. Goodbye.